good to see all our friends and family here today. And for any visiting with us, we appreciate you coming, visiting with us here at Salem Baptist. Uh, a very familiar text in 1 John chapter 1. We'll start here and uh, got the numbers of scriptures we'll be referencing this morning in the message, kind of uh, on just really a, a, a word study today uh, rather than a particular passage that we'll go through, and that's the word confession. Last week, we began a series on prayer, and uh, I felt led of the Lord to do this here in our beginning journey with our transition work, but uh, uh, there's some great value for all of us here, the lessons by way of reviewing. I hope they'll be helpful. Hopefully, I can give you some practical applications that you might consider in your prayer times that will be a blessing to you. Uh, it looks like uh, this series is going to take me a little longer than I anticipated, uh, though I was uh, kind of getting ahead of the Lord a little this week, thinking I know the direction that I need to go and want to go. Uh, I was interrupted this week to slow down a little bit and kind of do a little repeat from something last week and expound on it, if I may. Biblical confession is the name of our message this morning. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We referenced this verse last week as well in Proverbs 28, 13. Whoever conceals his transgressions will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes them will obtain mercy. Last week, we learned of necessary things to repair before we can be assured that God will hear and answer our prayers according to His will. Uh, we kind of referenced it this way. There are some things that would be very helpful that you can do before you actually petition the Lord with your request, before you actually get in the meat of praying and the, the diligent, the intentional part of our praying, seeking God's face, seeking His will, seeking His kingdom, being able to come to Him in that model prayer Jesus gave us, to ask Him for your daily bread, your necessities that are, that are needed, and of course, forgiveness of your sins. And one of the things we referenced last week I think was important for us in that prayer uh, that uh, uh, was given uh, was that we would uh, do some repair work. Elijah did that uh, as his prayer was heard and answered. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse number 38, the fire of the Lord failed. God answered his prayer. Uh, but he did a few things before he actually got into the throne room. And uh, he was repairing an old altar that was broken down. So last week, by way of review, we noticed there's some necessary repair work. <clears throat> and uh, that is to deal with our sins, to recognize we have them, to confess them in order that we might be cleansed. And we mentioned last week that uh, sin and iniquity is in our lives at times. Psalm chapter 66, 18, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The Lord will not listen. And uh, there are definite scriptures in the Word of God that remind us the Lord will not hear us. And uh, He will not answer according to the requests we may have. They will not be in the line of His will and do not line up with His Word unless you go through this process adequately. And so it refers to us is to deal with your sin. Recognize your sin and confess it, and forsake it, and the Lord will then hear you. And then if we neglect the Word of God, we're distanced from His Word. Proverbs 28, 9, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, his prayer will be an abomination. So there's a reference to the intimacy with the Word of God being aligned, uh, the willingness of walking in His obedience to what the Word refers to us. If you want to know what the will of God is, I would encourage you to find it in the Word. Most every, not all, but a lot of the answers to our prayer are right here in the Bible. They're right here. They're right there. If you're wondering, you know, and petitioning of the Lord, there's direction about how to pray. There's, 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 there's in the Word gives us some, some practical steps about having wisdom to do the needed things. And so the Word of God always lines up with the will of God. And so, if you're not close and if you are distanced from the Word, uh, your prayer will not 
be heard. It will be as an abomination to the Lord. We mentioned another thing last week that's kind of personal in our lives with our relationship with others in Matthew chapter 5, verse number 23. So if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. If you're in conflict with someone, if you have ill feelings toward somebody else, you got to do something about it. You don't need to put it behind and not talk about it, not deal with it. You don't need to skirt it under the carpet, but you need to bring it out. And if it's a person, times the Lord will lead you and remind you of that conflict where reconciliation is needed. So if I am irreconciled with a brother or sister, and there's a part that I can have in that. It might be that I'm the offender. It might be I'm the offended. But I still have responsibility to take an action and have conversation so that we can be reconciled. And then I'm free to come back and do business at the altar. And then lastly, we mention another one, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 7. And that is an undivided marriage where the husband and wife are not dwelling with understanding and knowledge of each other. You husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you and of the grace of life, so that your prayers be not hindered. And so we mentioned last week by way of review, four, and there's others, areas in our life that we need to move upon if we expect and believe God is going to answer my prayer. I don't know about you, but when I pray, I expect God to answer me. I don't wonder. Sometimes I get a little anxious waiting, but I'm confident God will answer me. I must position myself in a way that he takes that request according to his will and that I've prepared myself and I've repaired some things in my life, believing the Lord will answer, staying close to his word and following his admissions we just read just a while ago. So recognizing, confessing, and forsaking our sin is crucial to our prayer life. You need to personalize that now. You got to deal with your sin. You've got it, so you recognize it. You discover it. It's there. Sometimes it's difficult to discover it, and that's why we ask the Lord, search my heart, O God, and the Lord can put the light into our life to have the eyes of our understanding open. What's going on? And so I recognize my sin, and I quickly confess it. I have sin. And with a determinate mind that I'm going to repent and forsake it, forsake it. It's crucial, crucial. This may be the one reason you don't get many prayers. And let me back up just a minute. This may be the reason you don't pray much at all. You're not dealing with your sin. There is no desire to come boldly to his throne to obtain mercy and help in the time of your need, you see. You know what the Lord said? Here's what Jesus said. He said, you ask anything in my name and I will do it. You believe that. You Salem Baptist members, you all believe that. You ain't going to doubt his word on that one, are you, Matthew chapter 7? Anything in my name, I will do it. Where's the desire? And sometimes we don't even have the desire to pray because of this very subject we're talking about. The recognition that I have sinned to confess it and to quickly forsake it and repent and turn away from it. The confession, agreeing with what God says about that sin. So it's crucial in our prayer life to do this. Now, let's talk about the word confess just for a moment in our Bibles. This is a word study today on the word confess or confession. Confess means to agree or say the same thing as. Confess means to agree or to say. That's your mouth. That's you speaking. Say the same thing as. An illustrated verse is Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It says, 
If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's the confession. Now, the confession on this side is agreeing and believing as the same thing what God has spoken. God has spoken, and I give an amen. I give an agreement to it. I, I confess I agree with God. And so there's saying the same thing as there's that confession, Romans chapter 10, verse number 9. I'm using my mouth and confessing. I'm saying what God says. And when you go through the book of Romans, you'll see exactly that. It talks about being in sin, Romans chapter 3, 23. It talks about the, the penalty of my sin, Romans chapter 6, verse number 23. And it talks about the confession, believing that Lord Jesus, Romans 5, 8, God commended his love towards while uh, he was, uh, uh, that, that I'm yet in my sin, that, uh, uh, help me with this one, uh, that, uh, Romans 5, 8, somebody help me, I'm stuck. God commended his love toward us in the while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I agree with that, you see. And then it comes to a place a couple of chapters over. It says, now talk about it. Say it. I'm a sinner, Romans 3.23. There's a pen in my sin, Romans 6.23. The good news, God gave me eternal life by his own death. God commended his love toward me, you see. I agree with that. And so I confess it. Confession is is to agree and say the same thing as. Now, we've already read and noticed last week, you've got to confess. Confess if God's going to hear you pray. I'm agreeing with what God says in his word. And so, confession means to agree or say the same thing as. A prayer of confession, let's look at it as twofold. A prayer of confession is the affirmation of my sin, the recognition of my sin that I have sinned, but it's also the affirmation of God's truth, what God has spoken, what God has said. Now, if when you tie them together, what God has spoken in relation to my sin. That's those verses we read a while ago. So let me walk you through some practical lessons class. This is a word study on confess. This will help you if you will take the admonition from these scriptures, there's about 40 verses we'll go through in just a minute. Very quickly, I'll read them to you. And as you take note, you're agreeing with God for what God says. This is the journey you go on. I am trying to help you this morning to get some prayers answered. I'm trying to get you started on the right step. I have a burden that you understand the joy and the intimacy and the peace. When you can say this morning, I expect God to answer me when I pray, and I believe that he will. I've even had to use prayer sometimes as a weapon. I'll be honest with you. You may not understand this. I've had a few people threaten me in my life, and I've had to say to them, you better be careful. I get my prayers answered. You might want to back off. God hears me when I pray. I expect him. When I'm troubled, when someone's bothering me, when I'm in a conflict, when I'm attacked, I'll tell you what, the joy of knowing and having confidence that God answers prayer. He walks us through this in a journey, and the first step to believe it happens and to get this thing moving. And once you get one victory, you go to another. And you'll find if you've been on this journey for years, as I believe I have, for years and years and years and years, I listened to what Daddy taught me. I listened to my teachers. I listened to my pastors. I, I listened to my theologians. And they all taught me this one lesson in God's Word very clearly. You've got to deal with your sins before God answers your prayer. You've got to walk through confession. Don't just jump in the throne and say, give me, give me, give me, God. Do this for me. Consume things upon your own lust and your own desires in an inappropriate manner. And so to help you learn to pray, let's talk about confession this morning. Number one, why should I confess? 
And I'm just going to give you just a few things you might just take for your own notes. And that is, first of all, it, it's, the, it's, a, it's an action of being restored in fellowship with God. Not in relation, not in a position, but in, in fellowship with the Lord. So it's, it's a process of coming into a sweet fellowship with the Lord in order that I can have the confidence that the Lord will hear me. I don't want to guard iniquity in my heart. The Lord ain't going to hear me. I don't want to be far from his word. My prayer is going to be an abomination. I don't want to be reconciled with some brother or sister in the church. Man, I want to get right with that person. I want the Lord to hear me. I want something to happen at the altar when I'm praying, you see. I don't want to mess with my... Listen, my wife's a gift of God. I'm going to dwell with understanding and knowledge. And what's the word say about the relation in marriage? And, and the word speaks to me and says, hey, man, you, you better have a good marriage if you won't get your prayers in. You got a bad marriage, your prayers are going to be hard to be heard. You better get with it. Dwell with knowledge and understanding. I'd be concerned if I was sitting on the rocks over here in my marriage. There's one thing for sure. You find yourself in a probable position not getting your prayers hindered. And so God has the answer for us. Make it right. Deal with it. Get into it. Confess it. Agree with God about what he desires for that, you see. Recognize it, confess it, and forsake it. Why should I confess? Because it brings forward a process of restoration and fellowship. It's necessary for my spiritual growth. It opens the door for mercy and forgiveness. I like that. And so uh, it's an appreciation for what the Lord's done for my sins and my half to forgive me, to cleanse me, and to remove the guilt and the blight of my sin. And so what an understanding about the purpose. There's a reason that we should confess. Let me give you quickly three verses, uh, three prayers in the Bible that will help you. Now, I, I want you at least to write these texts down, if you will, on the, on the next slide. Uh, as to how I should confess. And that is, for starters, I think we can look at three prayers that are in the Bible for a purpose. These prayers are in the Bible for you to read. These prayers are in the Bible, you see, for your instruction. You know, don't you forget, 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So let's look at these three prayers in the Bible this morning to give us some instruction as to how we should confess our sin. The first one is a man named Daniel. In chapter 9, here's his prayer. Let me just read it to you in verse number 4. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession. Now there's the sample. There's the instruction. And by the way, students... Take note as I read these prayers, four things that are common in each of these prayers, okay? How do I confess? Well, let's open our Bibles and let's see how three godly men confess their sins. They're here today for us to learn from them. He said, I pray to the Lord my God and made confession, saying, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned and done wrong. We've acted wickedly and rebelled, turning aside from your commandments and rules. We've not listened to your servants, the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. To you, O Lord, belongs righteousness, but to us open shame, as it is this day to the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to all Israel, those who are near and those who are far away and in all the lands to which you've driven them because of the treachery that they have committed against you. Another sample prayer you know probably a little better would be found in Psalm chapter 51. And David prays this prayer. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly or thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I acknowledge my transgressions. You getting it? A little instruction this morning. Maybe that's what we need to do. And my sin is ever before me against you 
and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Now, one more prayer in Nehemiah chapter 1, three verses, verses 5, 6, and 7. And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your ears open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people which have sinned against you. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not command, uh, kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. These are prayers of confession that teach us how to confess. Biblical confession has numbers of earmarks. There's four of them that are found in these three prayers. First was their humility. You remember David was asking for mercy. They recognized the lowliness before a God in whom they were praying, all three. Then they're recognizing specific sin uh, in relation to their evil against the Lord. Uh, they believed in their confession. They would receive their forgiveness. David especially referenced that. And agreeing with who God is in the recognition of who God is. That model prayer of Jesus, remember he said, he said, now when you pray, he said, pray like this. And he recognized the God, the awesome God. And those prayers of Nehemiah and also Daniel spent just a moment and two talking about the great love of God that's been given to them. And they spoke about breaking and violating the commandments of the Lord. And it put them in a place that they're standing before God, breaking his commands they wanted back in that relation with the Lord. And so when you pray, here's how you can confess. You need to be humble. You need God's mercy. You see, uh, you're recognizing and admitting and affirming the sin that's present in your life, maybe a specific sin. Confidence that God will hear you and forgive you because he said he would and agreeing with the God that he is. By the way, don't ever hide your sins. Never, never hide your sins. What happens when I hide my sin? Psalm 66, 18. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not have listened. Proverbs 28, 9. If one turns his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer will be an abomination. Uh, uh, John chapter 9 gives us uh, that reference in verse number 31. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone who is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens. Psalm 132, and uh, that gives us a passage here in verses 1 to 6. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity. Isn't that good? Blessed is the person whom God counts no iniquity. And in whose spirit there's no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through the groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand is heavy upon me when I held on to my sins. My strength was dried up as the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters, they shall not reach him. I like that. And then it goes a little further to us. In Acts chapter 8, verse 21 is a reference here. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours. Pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart is forgiven you. Isaiah 59, 2, now I love this one. You've neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven. Micah chapter 3, verse 4, then they will cry to the Lord, but it will not answer them. He will hide his face from that time because they've made their deeds evil. You better quit your sinning. You better give some thought to it. You better decide before you do it. You're going to be in some trouble. 
You're going to get some hot waters. You're going to destroy yourself. You're going to break fellowship with your heavenly God. Stop your sinning. Stop it. Quit it. Forsake it. Get serious. Get intentional. Man up. Do right. But when you fall and you're guilty, you better repent. You better confess. You better face it for what it is and what it's doing to you because you now got it. And you ought to see the plight you'll find yourself in going through life. When you've got sin in your life and then sin that's not been reckoned with, especially confessed Agree with God what he says about that particular sin and agree with God about the way it can be cleansed and be restored back to your personal life in a relationship with the Lord or in a fellowship with the Lord that is so desired. And so what a process that's given to us in his word to agree with God about what happens to our sin. Then something else, what happens when I confess? Well, I'm rejoicing this morning that when I confess, forgiveness does come. They cry to the Lord. He said, I acknowledge my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I will confess my transgressions, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Psalm 128, verse 13 and 14, whoever conceals his transgressions ain't going to prosper. You listening? If you hide your sins, don't do anything about them, you ain't going to prosper. You're not. See, I'm agreeing with what God says there. I'm saying what God says. I'm, I'm confessing to you what the Word says this morning. And I'm agreeing with it. Will not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes their sins will have mercy. Blessed is the man, I like this, who fears the Lord always, but whoever hardens his heart is going to fall into calamity. Is that how you can describe your life and your situation right now? Calamity, calamity. I'm telling you what, it's a good thing to forsake your sin, to stop your sin, and when you get it, confess it, recognize it, forsake it. Call it for what it is. Agree with God for what he says. And you're going to prosper. And if you don't, you're going to be in trouble. You ever, you ever been suspicious about other Christians? It just looks like they're always in trouble. It ain't going right. I'm, I mean, life's treating them unfair. It may be. But also might be they get what God said they're going to get. A life of calamity. It just ain't working. Goals get unmet. I get discouraged easy because it ain't bouncing my way. My happiness is gone. I want to tell you something. You want to prosper? Stop your sin. Call it out when you're guilty of it. Ask God to cleanse you from it. And you tell God, I'm going to agree with what you said, God. I ain't going to do it no more. I'm going to forsake it. So that's what I want. Now, class, I love you. I don't mean to be hard on you. I just want you to know you've got to, you've got to hear what's being said this morning if you're going to be a prayer warrior, if you're going to get your prayers answered. Don't tell me how many prayers you get answered when you've got a bunch of sin that's not been dealt with and unconfessed in your life. And so what happens when I confess? Mercy's received. Healing is given. I like that. Cleansing is provided. What a joy. And joy is restored. Psalm chapter 51. And what a promise that is for us. How do I start confess? Let me just give you a few little notes this morning. We'll wind this thing up. How do I confess? All right. Don't do this here today, but here's your lesson class. Get a blank piece of paper out. Go home, get a blank piece of paper. I mean, this, this, I'm, I'm telling you how to confess. I'm going to give you an application. There's many ways, but this might help you. You'll understand this. Get out a blank piece of paper and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal any areas of your life in your thought, 
in your deed, your actions, where you ignore doing what God has said. That's agreeing with God, confessing for what God's Word has spoken. That's the one side of confession, is recognizing the truth, you see. And don't rush. Take a little while for this. It's a journey. Allow God to speak to you. And as your sin is ever before you, that's what the psalmist said, my sin is ever before me. When your sin has been brought to your attention, go ahead and write it down on that blank paper. Some of y'all might need two or three sheets of paper. I don't know. But just list them out. Here's where I've not been agreeing with God. And by the way, a lot of our sins for somebody here this morning, it might be, it's not the sins that you actually commit. It's the sins on this side. He that knows to do good and I'm not doing it, that's sin. So you might write down some sins of things you know you should be doing, you're not doing, and it's sin in your life, and the Spirit tells you that. You should be dwelling with knowledge and understanding with your wife. Sin of omission, somebody said. You commit sins and we omit the good things which create sin in our lives. The Holy Spirit reveals if you get humble. He shows you your iniquity and your sin. So you're dealing with it, you're writing it down. And then, thank God for Christ's death and resurrection. Here's a picture here. I recognize my sin. My sin is there for me. Here, Lord, here they are. But I'm thankful for the remittance of sin was the shedding of blood. The, 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 he came to seek and save those that are in sin, those that are lost. I'm thanking him for his death and his resurrection. And thank him that you've written them down, you've confessed them. He's faithful and just to cleanse you. You thank the Lord. Okay? So you got a blank piece of paper. You got your sins listed. The Holy Spirit's brought to your attention. You're confessing, Lord, these are my sins to God. You're confessing them to God. And in the light of his redemption, you stand in that recognition. The product or the process of my sin is to be covered by the blood of Jesus. I thank the Lord that you provided a way for my sins to be covered with your blood and now that's been confessed seek his cleansing to be cleansed and then take that piece of paper and throw it in a trash can because you're done with it it's done it's passed let me give you if I can for a moment a prayer of confession I think I've got it on the screen here a model prayer of confession in closing Lord you're merciful and loving you're holy and just. You sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross my sins. God, I've not listened to your word or obeyed your commands, and I'm sorry. I have, and you fill in that blank, that specific sin. But you, Lord, are gracious and compassionate, all you have made, including me. God, I confess my sins. And here's that double truth in confession. I confess the truth of your word. You said that if I confess my sins, you'll cleanse me. See, see there's agreement with what God said. I recognize that's confession, but the fulfillment is I recognize your word. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I come before you with a humble heart asking for forgiveness. I repent of my sin. I'm changing, Lord. I'm not going to do that no more. Cleanse me, Lord, and I will be clean. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit in me. I need you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you for loving me first. And so a good application would be this. Start confessing your sins early in the morning. Now, this is what I do. I'm not saying it's the only way, but I, I like to start my day that way. I confess myself. I find myself, I get up in the middle of the night, already started, it's after midnight, at one or two or three in the morning, one of the first things that come to my mind is my guilt. I'm in a habit of doing this. Confession, in a, in a daily process, start with confession, start with cleansing, start with naming my sins, seeking God, and then I go in my prayer time. 
Sometimes reading the Bible first in the morning leads you to the recognition. See, that's part of your confession. You're seeing what God says, and he opens you something there that's spoken to your heart where you're guilty. Read the Scriptures. Quickly confess the sin when it enters in, and pay attention when you go through this process to the effect of prayer that's included, has included confession in your life. What I'm saying there is you do this for a while, and, and, and then you start checking your prayer list, see how many prayers are getting answered now. It may be this is the problem. Maybe it's a problem. You're adoring the Lord, you're reading the Word, but you're skipping your confession of sin. And you begin starting with confession and cleansing and guilt of my sin that I might be cleansed and begin to see how God provides such peace and power through the cleansing Christian when prayers are offered. Then share your journey of answered prayer to someone else. You, you can disciple others as well in this process. And then rest in the presence and protection and provision of the Lord while you are cleansed. It's a good thing to deal with your sins before God honestly in a biblical way. And I just, I'm trying to be helpful, and I implore you in the name of Jesus to, to follow this process by agreeing with God that when you have sinned, He's faithful and He's just to forgive you, and He will cleanse you. It's going to be okay, but you got to do it His way. Father, bless the people of God as we enter our prayer life this year to pay great attention to the entrance of our praying is by having dealt with our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.